hello everyone welcome back to my channel this is life with b so today's video i'm going to be discussing what you should do um before you book and um a month before your sale before you book before you even put in your deposit or pay it outright depending on how soon you're going um the first order of business is to check your credentials um, if you're taking a passport, make sure that's up to date. Make sure it's not going to expire within six months of you um, taking your sailing. Uh, and if you're taking a birth certificate and a valid ID, make sure your ID does not expire and won't expire any time around your vacation before or after. Sometimes the cruise line won't accept it if it's going to expire while you're out on your sailing. Not only that, um, some excursions require you to have a license uh, depending on what you're doing. Um, so keep that in mind. Also, check the COVID requirements. Everybody knows everything is changing on a monthly basis, weekly basis, sometimes daily basis. Cruise, different cruise lines have different requirements, um, different uh, protocols and things like that. So those two are the main topics that need to be checked off before you submit your final payment on your cruise nine things that you should be doing one month before you're sailing i like to do a month and a half just to give it time but the very least one month before you're sailing first order of business after you booked your sailing make sure you have your insurance uh, you can either purchase your insurance through the cruise line, you can purchase it through the third party, like if you do Priceline or Expedia or something like that. Places you do your car insurance that offer travel insurance, there's Alliance, Alliance with a Z. Um, there are many different ways you can literally Google travel insurance and they will insure your flight, your pre and post um, accommodations and your cruise itself. Um, so make sure you have that. Make sure you are getting the insurance that is required. The minimum is required for uh, the sailing. And if you don't know what that is, you can always go to the cruise line and see what the requirements are there. Number two, lock in your pre and post accommodations. I am a firm believer that you go a day before you're sailing a day or two before you're sailing um, because before the shortage and all of the things that's going on with travel right now you never know you never know if your flight's going to get delayed you never know if it's going to um, be canceled if you have to make last minute travel arrangements because i've had to do that before um, make sure you have that locked and loaded because you want to get Give yourself enough time and enough room for error before your cruise. Either who wants to miss a cruise because you missed a flight. I'm not willing to play that game. I'm not willing to gamble that. Uh, the third is to lock in transportation. The actual cruise line that you're going to, and you could possibly book a transfer for them if they offer that. Um, there's ride sharing. Um, you can't really plan ahead too much for that like a month in advance. Uh, but if you're going to do a shuttle service, there's some... I personally like go port when I'm um, leaving out of Port Canaveral. Um, they have um, the snooze and cruise. They have the park snooze and cruise. There's different packages that they offer and you can use it however you need to use it. So I purchased my hotel and my transfer and I don't have to worry about it. Um, they tell me the times and where to meet them at and that's it so they have many different options please go check out goldport it takes the guesswork out of having to call the different hotels to see if they offer shuttle service what time their shuttle services are or even worse getting a um getting a uh, hotel that offers a free airport shuttle but the shuttle service doesn't pick up from the hotel it only picks up from the airport so then you've got to get up the next morning get back to the airport go back it's just too much just it's a lot and if you're traveling with kids if you're traveling even if you're not traveling with kids it's a lot to do 
Um, so make sure that you all check out GoPort. Make sure that you lock in your accommodations. Make sure you lock in your transfer, your transportation to and from the port. The next would be to order your items that you need for your sailing. Um, depending on the type of weather, depending on if it's things that you need, uh, whether it be essentials, uh, swimwear, clothes, toiletries, whatever it is, if you need to order it, that's enough time. A month should be enough time. Like I said, if you think it takes a little bit longer, do a month and a half just to give yourself time. Order your things that you need. That way you'll have enough time to get it. If it doesn't fit, you can send it back. If it doesn't work, you can exchange it however you need to do. Um, but whatever that you need for the cruise, if you have to order it, now's the time to go ahead and order it. So it will get to you in time. Purchase your specialty dining. If you want to do the steakhouse, if you want to do bonsai, if it's Royal Caribbean, the dining package, if it's carnival, your specialty dining, go ahead and pre-purchase and reserve your specialty dining now because some ships, now that things are back open to capacity, they sell out and they sell out really quickly and you don't want to miss an opportunity to enjoy the specialty dining on the ship. Prepay your gratuities. Um, sometimes it's uh, sometimes prepaying your gratuities is an option to do when you book your sailing and then sometimes it doesn't give you that option and then when you go to check in or you're going and the time gets closer you're able to um, prepay your gratuities so go ahead and do that so that's something else that you do not have to worry about also purchase your Wi-Fi um, and your drink packages because they are cheaper than if you were to wait to get on the ship and do it I think it's 10% discount 10 or 15% discount don't quote me on it but there is a discount um, if you purchase ahead also you can order your room decor um, and your in state room beverages so if it's a birthday party anniversary if you want to do some type of decor for inside of the cabin you can do that um, i also do the in cabin beverages but i purchase bottled water so when i get on the ship and i go into my stateroom it's literally waiting to pay what is that almost six dollars for that tall bottle one top tall bottle you can get a 12 pack for five dollars the last and most important would be to double check the covid requirements and protocols um they are changing like i said if you are vaccinated and boosted you can test three days before for carnival if you are vaccinated but not boosted it's two days prior um if it's a child under two they don't have to be tested and of course they don't have to be vaccinated uh, 12 and older they must be vaccinated and tested um, from 2 to 12 they I think it's optional for them to be vaccinated but they do have to get tested and depending on where they're coming from and how long the sailing is they have to get tested again on the way back so keep those things I in mind I want you to not make your cruise or make your trip because you have old information and it could have been as simple as just going online or double checking or something um, like so that wraps up today's video um, please don't forget to like comment and subscribe I am gonna start my cruise series I am taking my son on his very first cruise I'm kind of nervous it's a I guess it'll be considered as, well it's not a solo cruise but it's me going by myself with my one-year-old child so I'm going to vlog that series and I will be seeing you all in the next video. See ya.